everybody, I'm Joel Weber, the editor of Bloomberg Business Week. I'd like to introduce you to my guest today, John Stein, the CEO and founder of Betterment. Really important question I want to start with, which is what should I do with my money? Ah, you should bring it to Betterment, of course. Uh, if, if you're, but I had my question. <laughs> I had a feeling you might you might say that, but it, you know it's such an obvious question, and the financial service industry has so many players. You entered this fray ten years ago when you started Betterment. What motivated you to to you know enter such a competitive landscape? I, uh, I saw lots of competitors in the space and I tried most of them, right? I, I like to tell the story of back when I had graduated from college and I was working in financial services, I opened like seven different brokerage accounts with like everybody who was out there. And what I found was all of those services were very good at telling me what they wanted me to do for them. So it was trade this, buy this fund, do, do this thing, you know, but none of them were telling me what was right for me as a customer. And I thought it was time to build a service around what's right for the customer. These are your goals. Here's how much you need to contribute to reach your goals. You're on track and everything's okay. That's the kind of messaging that, that Betterment delivers that we've innovated on. And now we've created a whole category uh, and it seems uh, lots of folks are, are uh, after this idea of you know, a more advised customer centric uh, future for financial services. That's right. And, you know, that category that you mentioned is uh, basically a robo advisor was sort of the shorthand for it. And we've seen that now with you for, for 10 years. And like I said, it started really in the aftermath of the financial crisis. You had zero customers then, 500,000 now, 20 billion um, assets under management. Uh, and here we are living through another crisis. And I'm just really curious, like you, you have such an interesting look on society and customers. How are Betterment customers behaving during the pandemic? I like to say that we were born in a crisis like this and we were built for exactly this kind of environment. In, uh, in March, when the volatility was at its highest, all of our algorithms and automation kicked into high gear. We saw eight and a half billion of trading in that month out of our you know, over 20 billion of, of, of assets. And a lot of that was two-sided trading, meaning we were, uh, say, selling off assets that had fallen in value, uh, uh, um, uh, or rather selling off assets that hadn't fallen in value to buy assets that had, which meant that uh, when, when things rebounded as they did, our customers benefited a lot. That rebalancing made our customers a lot of money. Uh, we also were tax loss harvesting and taking advantage of, uh, of all the opportunities in this environment. And that's when Betterment's technology is at its best and we do that without customers having to do anything. So they can just stay the course, they're on track to their goals. Um, when, you know, if you talk to most customers, what they were doing at the time when the market was at its bottom, uh, you know, was they were selling, they were panicked, they were saying, hey, should I move everything to cash? Uh, and so we were, we were born out of a time like this, we're at our best in a time like this. And our customers, I mean, we've been growing. March, March was also a record customer growth month for us. Q1 was a record quarter, Q2, uh, it looks like we might set another record. So we've seen sustained inflows and, and continued uh, customer growth, which is exciting in this time. So the, the inflows, uh, what, do you, what do you project over the course of the, the year? What do you think it's gonna look like for, for you and your business? This is a particularly challenging time to project, um, you know, with everything that's going on in the world. But we saw, uh, for instance, in, uh, in, in the most, in the worst time, we still saw 26% more customers making deposits than withdrawals ad hoc, right? And for millennials, it was even more, 37% more deposits than withdrawals. So across our entire customer base, and particularly for our younger customers, they're just continuing to deposit, continuing to, to grow their accounts with us. So I think one thing that's really interesting about Betterment is you put a big emphasis on behavioral science and sort of mm -hmm. appealing to a side of, of a brain that you, you might actually um, be tempted to suppress sometimes in favor of, you know, selling when things get really bad, right? So how do you keep people investing when the sky looks really dark? One of the things that we've often heard is that when this next crisis hits, we're going to be really tested and everyone's going to run for the hills. Um, we, we maybe heard that from uh, financial advisors too, that 
what customers really need when things get rough is they need to call me. But I'll tell you, like a lot of financial advisors are using our software advisors like Josh Brown and um, uh, they, who to, to actually help their customers make the most of times like this. And the advisor, of course, is providing value on top of that with the long range planning and everything. But the software is doing a lot of the, the work of uh, what technically needs to change in this moment, which is you know, usually not a lot. Uh, and that gives the advisors comfort. It gives our customers comfort that their money is being well managed in any market environment. And, uh, and behavior is huge. I mean, we, uh, we've done a lot of analysis of, uh, of, of customer behavior over time to help our customers stay the course. We've seen, for instance, that if we put red and, and green colors on gains and losses, customers are more likely to trade than if it's just in black and, and it says, uh, you're on track. Uh, so, you know, in contrast to, I think, some apps uh, and services out there that are really trying to gamify trading, uh, and like lean into the gambling element of it, which I think does appeal to a segment of, of customers. Betterment, uh, true to, true to our, our roots, is all about making the most of our customers' money in the long term and doing everything we can to help customers make the most. And that's generally not trade uh, because when customers trade, they tend to underperform the market significantly over time. So I think that's, that's actually a really interesting um, phenomenon in the pandemic has been the kind of the resurgence of retail day trading, right? What do you make of that? I think people are bored and, uh, and I think casinos are closed and, uh, and it's dangerous to go to these places where sporting events are shut down. So there's no sports betting. So people are just like looking for ways to like kind of let that, uh, let off that same kind of steam. That's okay. I think that's a very human thing to do. It's fine to do with, you know, with small, small change. It just shouldn't be your primary investing strategy. And I think most, you know, sophisticated investors uh, acknowledge and, and agree with that. So do you, do you guys talk about how you can convert someone from being sort of that day trader type into more of a, a long-term investor, especially, you know, with, with a younger crowd who, who may not have a, as much experience investing? Yeah, that's a, I mean, I was one of those people, right? Like when I graduated college and I opened all these brokerage accounts, I had the experience of uh, wanting to, you know, read um, the financial news, understand which companies I might buy and go and, and invest. I learned um, the hard way, I guess, that um, even though, you know, I, I, um, uh, I knew better, I was out there buying um, some things that went really badly. I bought Enron on the way down, you know, thinking, wow, this is a great deal, which is reminiscent of, you know, maybe how some of the people are buying Hertz these days. I, um, I also made some good trades. I made some like really good investments, things that I bought cheap and, uh, and, and uh, made, made several times my, in, uh, my initial investment on. But over time and on average in general, I also had some investments in just, you know, mutual funds. And I found that those kinds of like index mutual funds were performing on average about as well as I was, even though I was investing all this time and, and stress in, uh, in, in trading on my own. And I realized my best use wasn't to do this like, you know, sort of day trading, but to pursue uh, something else, uh, you know, with, with, my, with my free time. Uh, and I think uh, maybe that's a thing that some of us just have to go through. And I think that as a company, we Betterment ought to accept customers as they are, right? Like come as you are, we're all human, we're all subject to these same kinds of behavioral biases. Um, and, uh, and like, let us coach you, let us, uh, take your portfolio in and coach you over time to reach an optimal best, best allocation for your goals. So one thing that, uh, your platform provides is the ability for investors to really personalize their portfolios and, mm -hmm. and set goals. Uh, and I'm, I'm wondering what are some of your favorite goals that Oh, there's some amazing ones. I mean, we have people saving for wedding rings uh, and trips and babies uh, and uh, FU money um, and like all kinds of, you know, fun, fun goal names. Uh, we just, uh, in celebrating our 10 year anniversary, we shared some of those. Uh, there's, a, there's a page on our site that shares some of the best ones uh, over the years um, because, oh, we've, uh, we've helped, you know, we have over half a million customers and uh, for many of those customers, they've reached some significant goals. I think we had uh, like three or 400,000 achieved goals um, over the last 10 years, even though most of our customers are saving for very long-term things like retirement, 
um, they might have near-term goals on the side, uh, be it safety net or, or something, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, that, that awesome, that, you know, shiny sports car or whatever uh, the, the goal name might be. So that, that actually is an interesting way to bring up the fact that, you know, you, a lot of it has been sort of under the guise of long-term investing, but this goal kind of idea allows customers to focus on, you know, whatever they want, really, right? And one of the things that I think has been interesting is like you've moved closer and closer to sort of, you know, frankly, being in checking and savings and like really looking like a bank, right? So what did moving into checking and savings, what did that accomplish for you? Why did you do it? You know, we've been talking about helping our customers reach their goals for since we since we started Betterment uh, 10 years ago. And one of the most important uh, elements of, of reaching your goals is how much you're saving. In fact, it's the thing most in your control. You can't control what's going to happen to the market. Um, you can't control what's going to happen to tax rates in the long term. But you can control how much you're contributing uh, every, every month and every year. And so we realized that if we wanted to have the most impact for our customers, one of the most important things we could do is help them manage their everyday spending and saving better uh, and make the most of that everyday money. And so from the very original vision, um, we, had, we talked about eventually getting into checking and savings. Uh, and we just finally did both of those things in the last year, checking uh, just, uh, just a couple of months ago launched. Uh, live to the public. And we've built this amazing service. I mean, we have a high yield savings account. We have uh, ATM fees reimbursed worldwide. Uh, we have a fee free checking account um, that lets you pay your bills, uh, do mobile deposit capture, uh, manage everything uh, from, your, from your mobile phone. And it's already linked and integrated to this best in market uh, investing and retirement solution. So it's very easy to, uh, to, to automate all of your money, to have your, your paycheck come in uh, and have a regular contribution going into your IRA, into your 401k, if that's with Betterment, your HSA, all of that can be integrated uh, and is all working smarter for you because it's all working here, uh, here uh, for you better together. So I want to take a moment and bring up um, a chart. And this one, it actually comes from um, some data that you guys got off of how people are using uh, their stimulus checks, uh, mm -hmm. and and I, I was really curious uh, to to know um, what what was surprising to you about these numbers. So uh, what was surprising to me was that most of our customers are putting their stimulus check into uh, into savings and investments, right? Rather than seeing it come in and go immediately out, we saw customers saving it and banking it. Um, I think part of that is because our customers are professionals, right? So they're not folks who are maybe living paycheck to paycheck. Maybe they're, they were less dependent on this stimulus money. Maybe they didn't lose uh, their professional services jobs, uh, you know, due to COVID. Um, uh, and, uh, but they were putting it, you know, many times toward safety net funds or retirement funds or like build wealth. Uh, and very little was going towards like, you know, a short-term, uh, a short-term savings goal. So I thought that was really interesting. Uh, so John, I want to ask you also, um, we've seen so much attention on social injustice of late, um, far more people aware of economic inequality. Uh, and, and, you know, I think one of the things about investing is that there's a lot of people who aren't. And I'm curious when you think about some of these challenges that are, are, are on a social level, and here we have a chart showing the the economic uh uh or the the diversity of equity ownership right and so you can see how uh you know whites uh, versus blacks or latinos are really invested in equities and i'm just really curious like how do you guys talk about getting more people invested i've seen some of this data and it, it it's just it's striking isn't it um that you know uh uh far too little of, of the wealth in this this country is is in minority hands um it had the numbers haven't changed enough they haven't changed quickly at all uh it's been eye-opening so like like many people in this time i've just been learning uh and uh and seeing what more we can do and my team have a ton of energy uh around uh these these social justice uh, equality driving initiatives i think in part that 
that energy uh, comes from uh, their, uh, you know, uh, their, their motivated in part. It's what brought them to betterment is um, we, we are a mission driven company. We believe that everyone should have access to great financial advice. We've always been open to everyone. Uh, we, uh, we have no minimum balance. We have no minimum fee. Uh, and so people have always, like we've always thought we're, we're open to everyone. But now in this time, we're thinking even harder about what can we do to unbias our advice, to uh, improve um, our diversity in, in, in hiring, to improve uh, the diversity of those who are using uh, Betterment, uh, reaching new demographics and so on. Uh, because we have to, uh, to to do better than we have uh, at moving the, the needle on some of these metrics, like the ones you're sharing in a slide. Okay. So uh, we also continue to face a you know a retirement crisis, frankly, in the United States. You, what what kind of policy changes do you feel are necessary to deal with some of these challenges that continue, just like what the, the topic that we were talking about, continue to sort of plague the country? I think policy changes is ultimately what's needed to help people save enough for retirement. Something like um, only 11% of retirement spending today comes from personal savings. A third of it is social security. A third of it is people working in retirement. Uh, there's some other government programs in this and that, but very little is actually like from investments. And yet, when you think about retirement, uh, you know, like the sort of conventional wisdom is, well, of course you have to save for your own retirement. It's just like a part of life. It's part, but it's really a small set of people who, who do that. Uh, and uh, and we, we all ought to be doing it. And, uh, and yet the behavioral economics side of, of, of me, and, 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 and I know you have an interest there too, we know that just telling people to do a thing or giving them tax incentives to do a thing isn't gonna drive real behavioral change. Um, you just have to make it a smart default like they do in Australia where everyone is required to contribute to a superannuation fund. You have to decouple it from the employer. Why should this have anything to do with like where you're working? It should be something that's uh, available to everyone that's portable uh, across companies where there's competition in the market instead of a single employee, you know, your employer choosing a single plan and everybody has to use that plan. Um, we could do a lot better uh, in policy uh, around retirement. We've often said at Betterment that we are trying to build the feeling of defined benefits in a defined contribution world, right? Since the 1980s, we've been living in a world where pensions have been declining, and today almost no one has a pension anymore, unless you're a government employee, uh, and everyone has a defined contribution plan, a 401k or something like this. But through technology, through smart advice, we can help people have the feel of, I'm on track, I know that I'm saving enough, even in that defined contribution world. And, and that's what our that's what making advice accessible to everyone is all about. Right. So I'm really curious about how uh, Betterment was really built on the back of the exchange traded fund, right? And mm -hmm. you know, you you basically have a bunch of ETFs and then you layer advice on top of it um, with customized portfolio, if I radically simplified what you do. Um, and I'm curious, could you have built Betterment without the ETF? There's no way. We're, we're standing on the shoulders of, of giants. And, you know, thanks, thanks to those who, who came out with ETFs and popularized them. When we launched in 2010, it was just at that inflection point where ETFs were broadly enough adopted and liquid enough that you could have a product like Betterment with a globally diversified portfolio all through ETFs. Really like even at that in that year, it was a little hard to get emerging markets, equities, you know, through through ETFs in a low cost way. But very quickly, you know, 2011, 2012, you, you could you could hit every asset class. And uh, we couldn't have existed before because buying mutual funds meant building a pipe to each mutual fund manufacturer. And that was a very expensive undertaking. It's still hard. I mean, we still uh, you know, we support DFA mutual funds for our advisors. Uh, uh, on the Betterment for Advisors platform, uh, but it's you know it's hard to build all those bespoke bespoke pipes, and so and so we don't. We just we just use ETFs, um, and you can do everything with ETFs now, and they're more efficient, and there's price competition because of them, and we've seen the prices of them come down since we started. And we've driven those prices down through negotiation with um, with our ETF uh, providers and passed those savings directly on to customers. So this this revolution of advice depends on ETFs, but there's another revolution coming, which is, uh, you know, 
today we can do so much, uh, you know, amazing accounting within a, 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 a personalization, but I think it will do even more. We're hearing more and more calls for socially responsible uh, investing or women led investing or black led investing uh, and leaning into that building like truly personalized portfolios with specific stocks for, for specific clients that still track an index. Um, that's clearly where, where things are trending uh, in, in our view. So does that mean that you won't need ETFs? ETFs are an efficient way to get uh, a, an index. Um, but I think that um, for those who want to personalize that index for, for any reason, uh, there will be more uh, 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 um, you know, small separately managed accounts or direct indexing. You know, People call it different things. But how we personalize an ETF to someone really involves buying the individual stocks to track that index and tweaking them at, in, at a little bit. Okay. So how else do you want uh, Betterment to innovate going forward? We're leaning heavily into, into that uh, investing uh, area that we've just been talking about around, uh, around personalization. We're doing much more around your cash management and automating the flows into your various accounts. We've already launched our two-way sweep which uh, through cash analysis that we do on your checking account, figures out how much cash you need in, in that checking account to cover 21 to 35 days worth of expenses and always maintains that much by looking at your bills, by looking at your paycheck uh, in a real time, in a real time way. Uh, and then sweeps all the rest into savings. And then if you have a big bill come up or you, know, you need extra cash, it automatically sweeps money back into your checking account. That kind of smart automation that just lets you kind of be, it puts things on, 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 uh, on autopilot, uh, is the, is the future of all financial services. It's what it's, it's, so you don't have to worry about it. You just know you're on track and automating your savings mm -hmm. is where we're now we're spending a lot of time today. Okay. So one of the things that between what you were describing and how you're viewing the future of sort of indexing and, and the sweep stuff is, is like you, it seems like you're almost transitioning into even more of a direct to consumer business. And I'm wondering how you're kind of preparing for that and where you're getting inspiration to apply to your business. Yeah, we've looked uh, at a lot at models like um, ING Direct, the, uh, the, the great, um, you know, uh, you know, old, old online bank uh, and Vanguard were a couple that really influenced me. It's, it's starting Betterment in the first place. We look at retailers like Zappos or, or Amazon uh, as folks who are customer centric and constantly driving innovation around the customer and customer service centric in the case of Zappos. And, uh, and we, uh, you know, I think that when I hear from, uh, uh, when I think about like, you know, mentors who've inspired me, you know, I think of, um, uh, you know, maybe Bezos on, on the retail side or, or Jack Bogle on, uh, you know, on the, on the investing side. Um, and Jack said, said to me, um, you know, uh, uh, when, I, when I first met him and again, um, more recently, uh, you know, yeah, you're, you're gonna help a lot of people with this. Uh, and so that's, that's been inspiring and, and encouraging along the way. So uh, I also, you know, am just wondering about, um, there's been so much downward pressure on, on fees and I'm wondering what, what you expect that to look like for, for your guys' model and, and will fees continue to be where they are or could you see downward pressure on, on your business model as well? We've seen downward pressure on fees. A, a lot of that has been the move from active funds to passive funds, right? And passive funds are lower cost to operate. And so by cutting out the costs, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, the, the price comes down. Uh, we've seen less pricing pressure in uh, for uh, advice fees. Investment advisors have not uh, been, been really reducing their fees. And in part, that's because like investment advisors are expensive. Uh, and, you know, the, like these are people who understand how to talk to clients, understand how to manage a portfolio, you know, like the, the technology that they're using. And that's, that's what we provide in the Betterment for Advisors side. The costs there are probably coming down, uh, at, least, at least ours uh, have been. And so we've been passing that on to our, our advisors. Uh, and, uh, and yet, um, you know, people are, you know, these are highly trained people who are expensive. And so the, the cost has, has been the same. Where I see the next um, price battle, I hope, 
uh, is around uh, around banking services because I think uh, banks charge too much in uh, in nuisance fees. They try too hard to push people into debt. They don't pay people any interest on on their savings. And those traditional ways of uh, of making money off of people's weaknesses, really, of of like their bad behavior, I don't think is aligned with the kind of uh, society that, that we want to create, where where people are empowered to manage their own money. You know, if you had a great advisor, an advisor would tell you, don't pay these fees, don't go into debt, earn something on your savings. And as a great advisor, we're trying to drive that price competition into banking and every everyday uh, cash management services. Okay. Um, what goals do you have left for yourself here? We have so much work to do, right? So like, you know, I talked about some of the, some of the things around, uh, around investing in cash. Um, and that's really just, you know, we're still, that, that's a 10-year that's a horizon, right? Like, like if, if, we, if we really nail those things, um, it's taken 10 years just to, to get this far. But longer term, how do we think about uh, insurance and, and time teens and like smart, responsible kinds of, of lending that really are, are good for people. Uh, there's more to do in, in the financial world to help people live better. Uh, and those, those problems uh, will continue, um, you know, and we'll continue to, to, to solve them with, with smart technology. How do you feel about going public? I've always wanted us to uh, to to be uh, an independent public company. It's been my ambition uh, from uh, from from day one, uh, and we're moving along that path. We're continuing to grow and attract customers uh, at a at an exciting rate. Uh, and uh, you know, ultimately, this is like a scale game, and for us to be a large scale player, we're going to have to to be a public company uh, someday. Any any sense of what that timeline might look like? Not today, no, yeah. It's, it's, it's weird time to have that conversation, no doubt. Um, I also amazing. want to ask, you know, what... I'm sorry, say that again? I was just saying it's interesting that the, all the, the public markets for IPOs do seem to still be open. We're, we are seeing some, uh, some companies coming out. So 10 years on here, um, I'm wondering, what advice do you have for your younger self? There are so many, I mean, I, I do a lot of mentoring. I do a lot of like chatting with, with people who are, who are starting out. It's, it's something that, that I enjoy. Uh, and, um, you know, some of the problems feel solved, but they never really are, right? Like there's always more innovation in the space. Um, just go and build it and make it real. You know, the technologies just keep getting better and better. Um, and I like to, to say that, you know, in our space, what customers want is, performance, convenience, and peace of mind, right? And as long as we just like keep investing in those themes, we're always going to uh, be attracting more customers and doing better for them. Um, but we, we spend, you know, all of our time and resources pursuing it. And like, there's still other people who, uh, you know, who, who are innovating. So there's plenty of opportunity out there. Go after it, make it real. Um, final question for you, John. Um, how often do you actually look at the stock market? Huh. I, it depends on how bad of a day it's been, but <laughs> I, I generally don't. Um, I, one of my, my uncle calls me uh, sometimes and says, you know, oh, you know, I assume you saw what happened in the market day. And I always say, nope, um, because, um, you know, my, my investments are with Betterment. I, uh, I do not uh, look at the day-to-day -day ups and downs. In March, when things were, you know, looking really bleak, like a lot of Americans, you know, it was hard to avoid uh, because our various publications were having, you know, the headline on the front page when you went to the home page was, you know, S and P tumbles, and so you sort of you can't avoid it on days on days like that. Um, but by and large, I I don't I don't have to. Uh, I have a financial advisor. It's called Betterment.